What can we do to reverse global warming? Become aware of the solutions and think about the actions you can take as you listen to how we are drawing down in Pennsylvania. For the majority of commuters, this particular sound made by a traditional bus is all too familiar. According to the 1990-2017 to inventory of the U.S. greenhouse gas emissions and sinks, transportation accounted for the largest portion, specifically 29%, of the total U.S. greenhouse gas emissions in 2017. With diesel-fueled cars and buses dominating our roads, the switch to their electricity-powered counterparts is more urgent than ever. This is Marie Cusick, a reporter at State Impact Pennsylvania, which is a public media collaboration covering energy and environmental issues in Pennsylvania. She's also a freelance reporter for the Energy News Network. Shifting our transportation sector away from one that's largely based on oil towards electrification is a big area of interest to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and limit the harmful effects of climate change. This is the mission of the Project Drawdown Solutions in the transportation sector, which seeks to improve the fuel efficiency of modes of transportation that rely on fossil fuels such as cars and buses. Though we know how energy-efficient transportation can help reverse global warming, there needs to be a balance between efficiency improvements and increased utilization of mass transit. Rebecca Collins, the Corporate Initiative Manager for Sustainability at SEPTA, which is the public transit agency in southeastern Pennsylvania, discusses the current challenge in the amount of people using public transportation. Public transit ridership in southeastern Pennsylvania, as well as the nation, has seen an interesting transition over the past decade or so. SEPTA is similar to what the whole nation is seeing around bus ridership and ridership on buses nationally, as well as with SEPTA, is seeing a steady decline. And so the industry right now is really trying to wrap their head around why this is happening and what we can do to reverse or mitigate this decline. Nonetheless, Ms. Collins says that people's patience is vital in the transition from conventional to electric transportation. I think it's really important to be patient and understand that we are committed to exploring this technology, but it still has a long way to go. And the way that I kind of like to think about it is this first generation of electric buses is kind of like the first generation of smartphones. And so the technology is just getting better and better and better and able to provide, in the future, battery technology, bus technology will just continue to get better. So I think that while everybody wants kind of this immediate transition to electrified vehicles, it's a lot harder and more infrastructure intensive than than maybe folks realize. And so we're taking the approach that This is a valuable technology. It is the next wave, but we also know that it's rapidly evolving and we have to understand how it operates in our environment. Shifting from public transportation to individual vehicle ownership, there are also some solutions that are not without their challenges, as described by Ms. Cusick. 
People make individual choices about what makes sense for them, and I think it's important to recognize that when somebody buys a car, they do hold on to it for a while. So it's not as though everyone with a gasoline car is going to run out right now and buy an electric vehicle. Cars stay on the road for a decade or longer. So adoption of electric vehicles is also complicated by the fact that people are still learning about electric vehicles. It's not just about the purchasing, but also having the necessary infrastructure in place for electric vehicles. I think there's certainly a need to build out the charging infrastructure so that people feel like they can be secure when they go on long trips. But I think initiatives like this, like this report and Pennsylvania's Drive Electric Coalition, are obviously going to help spread public awareness about electric vehicle usage. In the end, there are many options and choices that an individual must consider. I think certainly many people do care about lowering their greenhouse gas emissions, but I also think you're just starting to see more car manufacturers offering people more choices. You know, we've seen that Tesla, for example, has not been super successful at delivering electric vehicles to the masses that people can afford, but they've certainly created something that's become sort of a luxury status symbol in certain circles. Other vehicle manufacturers are creating less expensive options, and they want to appeal to a wider market. But again, I think it's a challenge because this won't necessarily work for everyone right now. For example, if you're renting an apartment in a city and you don't have a dedicated parking space, it's just harder right now to be an electric vehicle owner. But we are clearly seeing a lot more car manufacturers uh, producing more models, and they're becoming cheaper. And I think certainly we're seeing interest growing. As a whole, in the state of Pennsylvania, there are efforts to move forward with energy efficient transportation. But、uh, we are seeing progress, and specifically in Pennsylvania, we've seen, for example. Governor Tom Wolf's administration came out more forcefully in recent months, talking about climate change. For example, he set the state's first greenhouse gas emissions target earlier this year, and they're putting out more reports like this one. We're talking about electric vehicles. The report Miss Cusick refers to is the one published in 2019 by the Drive Electric Pennsylvania Coalition and the Pennsylvania Department. Of environmental protection, titled "The Pennsylvania Electric Vehicle Roadmap." The purpose of the report is to review the state of the electric vehicle market in Pennsylvania, define a set of proposed strategies to support the expansion of the electric vehicle or EV market, and to provide estimates. Of the potential benefits and impacts to the state from an increased EV market, the roadmap will help inform policymakers in the Commonwealth interested in supporting EV growth in Pennsylvania. In southeastern Pennsylvania, SEPTA is moving forward with their own roadmap for exploring electric buses. Our goal with exploring this technology is to prove that the electric vehicles can operate in the same way that our diesel buses operate. And what I mean by that is, we want to make sure that the buses, the electric buses, can go out. They can operate on the same routes at the same distances that our diesel buses currently operate, so that passengers will not experience any. Changes in the service that we provide. What's really important about SEPTA sustainability program is that we focus on a triple bottom line approach. So we look at environmental factors, of course, but also how our our projects and our infrastructure affect the community. So we have a social perspective and looking at the financial perspective, economically. One of our values. Guiding principles of our sustainability program is that all projects that we invest in either need to see a return on investment or be cost neutral. So sustainability needs to make financial sense for us, and we'll continue to 
look into ways to increase the environmental, social, and mitigate kind of that economic impact for all of our sustainability programs. Residents of Pennsylvania do care about the impact on the environment, according to Ms. Cusick. We know from polling that we've done that Pennsylvanians do really care about climate change, and they're increasingly seeing it as a bigger concern. They're seeing the effects in their own backyards. Ms. Collins from SEFTA shares what an individual person can do to support energy-efficient public transportation. I think what the average person can do to support public transit agencies is use public transit. Like I said, we're experiencing across the nation a decline in ridership. So in order for us to continue to be successful and really mitigate the change, the effects of climate change, people need to start using lower carbon options to get around. So that is the single most important thing an individual can do to support SEPTA and public transit agencies in general. To summarize, the book Drawdown reminds us that the use and sustainability of transportation cannot be separated from how and where people live, work, and play. Two major influences going forward will be the design of the urban environment and the reduction of excess consumption. Thanks for listening. This is Anna from Penn State Brandywine.